Chilling Adventures of Sabrina is about a witch who has to choose whether to sign her soul over to Satan. The show leans in on the shadowy aspects of the occult big time, but real-life members of the occult have turned a critical eye towards the show. Here's what Sabrina gets wrong about the occult. In Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, every witch, including Sabrina, is given a dark baptism once they turn 16. During this ritual, they sign their name in blood in the Book of the Beast, giving themselves over to an eternity of servitude to the Dark Lord, aka Satan. In doing so, Sabrina, who is only half-witch, would put an end to all mortal ties and become a full witch, submersed in the world of the dark arts. Are you willing to forsake the path of light and follow the path of night wherever it may lead you? I am. This makes for great television, but it isn't real life. Refinery29 quotes a witch named Amanda Yates Garcia as saying on-screen depictions of witchcraft as dark or satanic are the, quote, bane of her life. Garcia and many other witches like her agree the concept of Satan is something that comes from the Christian religion. They don't believe in him, and he has no part in the occult practices witches associate themselves with. A male witch named Murthine told the BBC, We don't do anything sinister like devil worship, and we don't make human or animal sacrifices. We honor, revere, and give thanks to nature. We celebrate the seasons. It's not all blood and gore. And Daisy October, a witch who contributed to a Huffington Post article on the matter, says, The lord of witches is not Satan. Most African traditional religion practitioners, Wiccans, and pagans have no concept of the devil in their spiritual traditions at all. The concept of servitude, a major plot point in Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, is not something any real witch would have an interest in. While in the show, witches are ruled and governed by a hierarchy of dark figures, the fundamental beliefs of witchcraft as it exists in reality revolves around governing oneself. Laura Tempted Zakroff told Refinery29, I don't worship anything. Rather, I listen, observe, commune, and connect with the world around me. She goes on to say, quote, honoring and respecting yourself is a key value. My name is Sabrina Spellman, and I will not sign it away. Quartz drives the point home further. In 1974, a group of 73 witches, known as the American Council of Witches, had a four-day meeting in Minneapolis to agree upon a set of common practices so Wicca could be recognized as an official religion in America. The end result was the 13 principles of Wiccan belief. Number one on the list is, We practice rites to attune ourselves with the natural rhythm of life forces marked by the phases of the moon and the seasonal quarters and cross quarters. Keyword, ourselves. In the sixth slot, you'll find, We do not recognize any authoritarian hierarchy, but do honor those who teach, respect those who share their greater knowledge and wisdom, and acknowledge those who have courageously given of themselves in leadership. No dark figure controlling everyone here. During Season 1, Sabrina and a few of her other classmates from the Academy of Unseen Arts are shown casting a spell while occupying all five points of a large pentacle drawn on the ground. The symbol of the five-pointed star with a circle around it is used frequently throughout the series, primarily in association with some horrific and or terrifying activity. But as a real witch will tell you, that's not the intended use of pentagrams and pentacles. According to the site Witch's Lore, the pentagram and pentacle are symbols of protection against, quote, evil and negativity. The pentagram represents the human form as well as the five senses, the three aspects of the goddess and the four elements of nature, while the circle is, quote, a way to bind the elements together. <coughs> Blessed be. All Wicca makes clear that the symbol has been misrepresented for ages, but cannot possibly be a symbol of evil or devil worship because Wiccans do not believe in the devil. In 2018, the Satanic Temple sued Netflix and Warner Brothers over chilling adventures of Sabrina's use of a statue of the goat-headed deity Baphomet, claiming the show violated, quote, copyright and trademark of the temple statue. Traditionally, the deity Baphomet is depicted as having a woman's body with a goat's head, but the temple's version has a male chest and is flanked by two children. The Satanic Temple's version of the statue can be seen heavily featured in chilling adventures of Sabrina within the Academy of Unseen Arts as they protest that the show's use of it creates an association of evil and darkness. The temple would further prefer not to be associated with such, quote, evil antagonists. The $50 million copyright lawsuit was later settled, and Netflix agreed to, quote, acknowledge copied elements in the credits of already filmed episodes, according to Variety. It's been appropriated by many different groups throughout the ages, but its origins are not directly tied to anything evil. Throughout each season of Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, Sabrina, her aunts, and her peers at the Academy of Unseen Arts find themselves in predicaments that require elaborate spells to be conducted, often in Latin. Blood is spilled, the clouds quicken, smoke fills the room, everyone's eyes turn white. Spooky stuff. Tergento fuoco quad evoco te exito. According to real witches, that's not really how things go down, at all. 
Shana Leilani, a witch who works at a metaphysical store in Los Angeles, says, The appeal of witchcraft is dangerous and sexy, but real witches are more like your grandma. Regarding the series, Bruja Brittany Bella Graham adds, Nobody would watch it if Sabrina were just taking an herbal bath. For the most part, real spells require little more than a few herbs and magical intentions. What's more, those spells shown on Chilling Adventures of Sabrina involve ingredients that could actually really harm you. Leilani asked of the show's depiction of spells, Who's consulting for you guys? You got about 5% right, and then you went off in this whole different direction. I really hope some dumb teenager doesn't try drinking this. You better really know your dose or you could end up killing yourself. Joshua Conkle, a writer for the show, is a practicing witch himself and admits that some of the writers do more research than others. He told Patheos, the mandate has always been to borrow from books and films, not so much real witchcraft practices. In the very first episode of Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, a joke is made about sticking pins in a voodoo doll, which to the uninitiated sounds like something a witch might do. Hawthorne has never been sick a day in his life. What did you do, stick pins in a voodoo doll? Voodoo dolls are often depicted in the media as being tools for revenge, but that's not their original intended purpose. In a post on Original Botanica, it's explained that voodoo dolls are instruments of intent, not evil. The word voodoo means spirit of God, which they honor and communicate with via spirits referred to as loa. According to the post, African shamans started using dolls as a way to communicate with the loa, like their dead ancestor, for guidance. Voodoo itself is one of the most widely misunderstood religions, so naturally, the voodoo doll, most likely the first thing that comes to mind, Mind when you think of the word voodoo would also fall under false light. With any other religion, it stems from goodness and is only made bad by people's ignorance. In Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, Sabrina struggles with a choice. Sign herself over to the Dark Lord and become a full witch, therefore surrendering all ties to mortal life, or continue along as a normal 16-year-old, going to her mortal school and hanging out with her mortal friends. You wouldn't understand, Ambrose. You were born a full witch. You didn't have to say goodbye to half your life, your friends, your boyfriend. True. In the end, she decides she shouldn't have to decide at all. In the real world, witches don't have to either. In the New York Times, practicing witch Pam Grossman describes living a completely normal life in Brooklyn, while also keeping up with her witch practices. She's married to a non-witch who collects Star Wars toys, describes her life as ordinary, and, as the article states, is among the modern wave of witches who, quote, "...identify more with feminism than burnings at the stake." Even so, she says, "...my friends are constantly teasing me about if I eat babies or whatever, and it makes me laugh." Grossman states, although she doesn't and keep her belief hidden from her mortal friends, she's careful to communicate exactly what a witch is, saying, The word witch is loaded and coded. I'm thoughtful about how I use it because it's a word that carries weight. In Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, witches acquire their skills via birthright. Sabrina is born into inherent duality because her father was a witch and her mother was a mortal. At the age of 16, she's told she can become a full witch if she shuns her mortal side and signs herself over to the Dark Lord. In real life, however, witches don't have to be born witches to practice their craft. An article on Otherworldly Oracle makes clear the concept of witches being born or made is a divisive one, depending on which witch you speak to, but the writer of the post lands on the belief the answer is both. Many witches will describe having felt a strong connection to nature and noticed something special brewing within themselves at a young age, which could be signs they were born witches. But other witches claim to have felt a call to the craft which led them to learn it. Also valid. The witchcraft side exemplar tips the scales in terms of the debate by saying plainly, witchcraft is the practice of magic. That's it. It's a thing a person might be more inclined to pursue, like how some people have a natural gift for math, but it's also very much a thing that can be learned. In Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, Lilith is often referred to as Madame Satan and is depicted as being a handmaid to Satan, while simultaneously vying to take over his throne as ruler of hell. Her backstory on the show is that, biblically, she was the first wife of Adam but refused to be subservient to him, so she was banished from the Garden of Eden by God. This is close to the actual biblical story of Lilith, but primarily fiction. According to the Biblical Archaeological Society, she makes a solitary appearance in the Bible as a wilderness demon shunned by the prophet Isaiah. It wasn't until the Middle Ages that she makes a reappearance as the so-called dreadful first wife of Adam. The Society's text goes on to say that for 4,000 years, the story of Lilith has been conflated with the mythic imaginations of writers, artists, and poets. I'm the mother of demons, the dawn of doom, Satan's concubine. I'm Lilith, dear boy. It only takes a few spins through Google to see pretty clearly that Lilith is used as a cautionary tale written and rewritten by men throughout the ages to scare women into obeying their husbands. Joke's on them, though. It didn't work then, and it still won't work now. 
Witches are ruled by and fear of and in near constant hiding from a number of men rulers in Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. There's Father Blackwood, a high priest of the Church of Night, who attempts to use Sabrina and any other woman he comes in contact with as pawns to further his evil ambitions. There's Lucifer, who, well, you know what he's all about. And there's Caliban, the Prince of Hell, who is in direct competition with Sabrina over Hell's supreme leadership. It's stressful to watch these powerful women be tormented by evil machismo, but thankfully that's not a concern of theirs in real life. Modern-day witches would never take a knee for a man. In the book Witches, Sluts, Feminist, Conjuring the Sex Positive, author Kristen J. Soley states, Witches embody the potential for self-directed feminine power and sexual and intellectual freedom. She goes on to drive the point home, saying, It's no coincidence that the reclamation of the witch as a symbol of female power and persecution started with the suffragettes, and later saw a renaissance in the women's liberation movement of the 1960s. Plus, witches essentially worship and are therefore governed by nature, not men. On Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, witches are matched with animals known as familiars who serve as their guides and protectors. Sabrina, you need to pick a familiar before your dark baptism. The council sent the registry. I've uh, indicated a few suitable options. In Season 1, Sabrina calls Salem to her using a spell, and that's how they're matched. Familiars have been associated with witches and vice versa for ages, but are they still a common thing amongst modern witches? Conversationally, sure, for fun, but not for any practical purpose. In fact, they never actually were. Ancient Origin says of the popular image of a witch and her trusted familiar, This is a fantastic archetype of magic users wielding control over nature and animals, but it's a far cry from the beliefs that started it all. When witches were heavily persecuted throughout Europe and North America during the medieval and early modern periods, any animal they were seen with was called into question and considered some mystical creature used for their evil bidding. This resulted in horrors like cat massacres. But then, same as now, sometimes a pet is just that, a pet. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.